Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Today we are installing one of these Nest Learning Thermostats. Actually two. It's a dual zone system, which means that downstairs you've got one zone for the heating, another zone for upstairs. So we've got two of these to go in. And we're here at the wiring center. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fit one of these in a dual system. Hopefully it'll help some of you who are trying to learn how to install these yourself. We've got, this is the thermostat face which is the thing that you use to turn the temperature up and down. It's kind of like the brain that communicates with your system. It's your sort. But then inside the box, the thing that actually does the wiring and switching side of things is this, it's called the heat link. So this is like a sort of a relay box basically, which does the switching to switch the hot water and heating on and off. So up here at the wiring center is where we're gonna fit the two heat links. And then these actual thermostats will go to replace the existing thermostats on the walls where the old thermostats were. But we have to alter the wiring a little bit to make sure that these work properly and safely. So we'll jump in the cupboard and we'll figure out what's going on in the wiring center. And this is our wiring center. So all looks a little bit of a tangled mess, doesn't it? But when you know what's what, it's actually fairly easy to to understand. And we're going to put our two heat links here for the two nests, connect those in to this wiring center, and then just reconfigure some of the wiring in here so that everything does work as it's supposed to work because we are changing up the system slightly. So for the three core, um, three core and earth cables that are going to the existing thermostats, what we'll do is disconnect those from the terminals here and just turn those into a 12 volt power supply which goes to the thermostats on the wall um, so they, this thermostat thing doesn't actually do any switching directly it just switches everything via the wi-fi network but we've got the heat links to go here which are like relay boxes basically and then the other thermostat is in the bedroom up here um, so i'll show you the bedroom and then we'll get cracking <laughs> So this is the thermostat for the bedroom, which does the whole upstairs heating zone. And as you can see, exactly the same. It's basically got a three core and earth cable coming from the heat, the wiring center to here. Only two of the cores are used at the moment. It just basically acts as a switch. This old one's going out and then we're gonna put the new one on there. And as I said, connect it to the low voltage power supply side from the Nest heat link. Right, so this is what we call the programmer. And this is basically the, the brain of the old system that controls when the hot water and heating will come on and off. So it has like a seven day timer or a 24 hour timer and it will send a signal to the heating system to come on and off at certain times. We're replacing this brain with a new nest brain. So, and actually this kitchen's being gutted and we're gonna get rid of this completely. So what we're gonna do is just disconnect the wires from this. This is permanent live and neutral coming in. And then the switch live going out here, number two, if we look on the wiring diagram on the back, um, we've got, does it say? Three and four. One, two, three and four. It doesn't actually say which one's hot water and which one's heating, which is slightly unusual, usually. So number two, um, hmm, that is strange. Number two and number four. But it doesn't say which one does the heating and which one does the hot water. So we're going to have to figure that out up at the wiring center. Usually it will be labeled. One will be labeled as hot water and one will be labeled as heating, so it's quite easy. This is all dead, by the way. Um, I've already safely isolated the circuit. but this is gonna to need to be made safe to a point where they can either remove it when they remove the kitchen or they can just put a blank plate over it or something. So that was our permanent live in. That was our number two. I think they might have fed it from this. You can see the common lot jumping across. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
Um, little note, it's always good to take a photo of this before you start disconnecting everything because then you can look back and you can see what was wired up to where. So that's a little tip for you. Um, but in this case, I don't know where these two wires were even because they weren't connected to anything. So I think pretty much this can go, but we'll leave that as it is for the moment and then we'll come back to it later once we know what's going on upstairs. Now, one important thing to note is that this is paired with this. They need to stay together, they're not interconnectable. So that, when you open the boxes, if you've got two, you really need to mark them up. Otherwise, you can get problems if you, um, you don't know which one's paired with which. So what I usually do is write, uh, say like upstairs and then I'll write that on the back of this and then the other one I'll write down you could just put a label as well but put down and then down and it's just then you know which one goes with which so that when you set everything up you know this needs to go downstairs otherwise you can get serious problems and it's very hard to figure it out afterwards if you, if you don't do that. So I'll try to explain this to you a little bit. You have a main power supply for the whole heating system, which is this. So what that does is just, you've got like a live and neutral and earth that come into the wiring center to feed the main power to everything. And then from there, it goes out to the various bits and pieces of equipment. So we have this, for example, these black flexible cables with a brown, an orange, a grey, a blue and a green yellow. These are what we call motorised valve uh, or zone valves. So it looks like we've got three here. This one up here above my head is going to be for the hot water. So that will basically open and close to turn the hot water on and off and then down here next to me we've got two more valves and very kindly they've labeled them up look heating zone valve down and heating zone valve up so this is the upstairs heating this is the downstairs heating and those are these two cables here so we can just trace the cables and then see where they're terminated into and so switch things around accordingly this is the pump so these pumps are usually just permanently powered on and then when there's a flow, the pump will kick in. Um, sometimes they're set up so that they only power on when the actual heating is powered on as well. So we'll see about that. And then these, uh, what have we got? Four flexors. We've got, this, this one is just the immersion heater power. So immersion heater, it's just as a backup, basically, when you've got a gas boiler or whatever, there is an immersion heater, which is an electrical water heating element, but you don't use it unless there's an emergency and the boiler stops working, and then you can just switch that on, and it'll heat the water manually without the boiler. So we can kind of ignore that. Um, then we've got this cable here, which goes to the tank, and that will be what we call the tank stat, or thermostat, Basically, it measures the temperature in the water tank and it will switch on and off depending on what the temperature is. So it'll be set to say 70 degrees. Once the water gets to that, that heat, it will click open and it'll break the contact, which will turn the boiler off and it'll stop heating because the water in the tank is hot enough already. Um, then there's another one going out here, which I'm not quite sure what it does so we'll have to have a look at that but they go into this trunking and they come out here uh, so we've got yeah oh it's just maybe two tank stats one one for this lower element and one for the upper element i think that's obviously the the one that's for the boost um for a backup so probably this is the one that we want to use for our main temperature 
um, but we check that we'll check that inside and in the back of a wiring center often it has a little diagram like this which kind of tells you what all the wires should be so you can see for example here you've got uh, the room stat the wires for the room stat so that should be two and three but actually very rarely do they follow this <laughs> so when i look at two at three now it says call and common from the room thermostat i look at that they're just green yellow wires they're just the earthing wires circuit protective conductors so probably we can just ignore this and we have to figure it all out ourselves what is what the two port valves four five and six again uh, four and five are, are the neutrals you can see the brown the blue wires in there so that's not correct um, looks like six is probably permanent life because you've got a load of brown conductors in there and then the grey in the motorised valves is, is also a permanent live conductor. So that's that. That's why that's linked out here. So these two terminals are actually linked all the permanent lives together. This one is probably our permanent life to our tank stat, I would think. But we'll have to trace that out. The orange wires are the switched lives for the valves. So when a valve closes, it's also got a switch inside it and that makes contact and sends the power from the permanent life back up the switch live here. And then potentially it will tell the pump to kick in or something like that. Yeah, so actually this is the pump. So this wire here, yeah, this is the pump power. So what happens is when the valve opens and it's fully open, a terminal inside the valve switches and makes contact between this, which is permanently live, and this, which is only live when the valve is open. So it's like valve's open, now pump can start. So then it sends power to this, the pump powers on. So essentially all three of our valves here, these three orange wires, anytime one of those valves opens, the pump gets powered on and it starts circulating water around the system. And depending on which valves are open and shut, depends where the water goes to the correct place. So that's fairly straightforward. Then you've got these two here, which have two black wires in. Now, these black wires are stiff. So these are solid copper conductors, whereas these are flexible. So these are the flexible conductors that go into these flexible cables. These solid cables go to our room thermostats and our um, our programmer location where the programmer was down in the kitchen. So the programmer, I think probably what this is, is the two heating zones. So we can find out which one's which of those. One will be the upstairs and one will be the downstairs. And that's essentially when the thermostat is calling for heat, it switches power to this which then opens our zone valve. And that is what we need, these two wires then, we need these to be controlled by our nest heat link. So that when the nest calls for heat, it sends power to these to open up our two zone valves. And then these, which currently go to the thermostat locations, will disconnect and we will reconnect them to the 12 volt output of the nest heat link. And they'll literally just power up the nest thermostat that goes on the wall. So central heating, it baffles a lot of people. A lot of electricians won't touch it, but basically it's just a series of switches, one after the other, that do various things. So in this case, you've got a switch that powers it on. Then you've got another switch, which is the room thermostat, that basically says power on to the heating system. And you've got also the programmer, which says power on. So if you choose that at this time, you want the heating to come on, and then the thermostat says it's not warm enough, that switch is closed, then it will turn the heating on. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this, by the way. So up here then, these two are probably our hot water controls, which would make sense because that's the valve that goes up, the cable that goes up to our valve up above. So essentially what we've got here, this blue and brown wire You've got the gray wire that comes up from the programmer. 
So that programmer that we saw earlier downstairs, when it was set to have hot water on, it would send power up to this grey wire, which then sends power to our tank thermostat. So you've got switch one is the programmer saying call for heat, that closes, that sends power to switch two, which is our tank thermostat. When the tank is not hot enough, that closes. So that's, we've got power going down this brown wire and then coming back up the blue wire when the switch for the tank thermostat is closed, which then sends power to our valve for our hot water. The valve opens, that, send, that closes another switch which sends power to our pump. Our pump starts to circulate. As soon as the pump circulates the water, the boiler kicks in automatically and starts to send hot water into the tank. That's how it works. So it's just a series of switches, as I say. But before you start messing around with this, if you're connecting a Nest thermostat or any other smart thermostat, the best thing to do is take a photo of it as it is. Because if anything goes wrong and it doesn't work, you can always revert back to how it was at the start. So what I do is take a picture on my phone, like that, and then I can always look back and see how the wires were connected up. It's also good to run the existing heating system and just make sure it all works properly because there would be nothing worse than setting it all up and then it not working but actually it didn't work properly before, it was a fault with the boiler and you're thinking you've made a mistake, but actually you've not made a mistake, there was already a fault on the system and it didn't work properly. So we always just crank everything up, get it all running, make sure it works properly before we touch anything. Then if there's problems later, we know that it's something we've done and not a problem with the system. So I'm uh, blathering a bit there, but just wanted to explain those few things to you. So the heat links, uh, where, are, where did I put them? Here we go. So first things first, we'll mount these on the wall, something like that. And then we'll give ourselves enough space to get these new flex cables into the heat, uh, into the wiring center. done is I've just pre-terminated all the wires in here it's just easier to do it sometimes while it's off the wall rather than doing it on the wall so I've got two flexible cables I've got a five core flex which is to do the permanent uh, live and neutral and then the two outgoing switch wires one for the central heating and one for the hot water and also the circuit protective conductor the, the earth it's not actually necessary because it's class two but it does have an earth terminal so you can use that as the fifth core and then this one which is now pulled out this is a 12 volt cable so this is just going to power the thermostat that goes on the wall the actual glass turny thing and um, because that requires a 12 volt power supply so we're going to use this from these 12 volt terminals here into the wiring center and then just wire through onto the hard wiring that's already going to those room thermostats and reuse that to send the 12 volt signal to those room thermostats. So we're gonna mount this on the wall now. This is the upstairs one. So I'm gonna put that up, physically up above the other one as well, just seems logical. And we're gonna be doing the heating and hot water off this one. Then the bottom one, the downstairs, is just gonna do the downstairs heating zone. And Nest supply these really nice screws, so I do tend to use them. They are special screws that mean you don't need to put a raw plug in the wall, especially with plasterboard, it's super easy. So you can just screw them in and they give a really good fixing without the need for drilling and, uh, and putting, putting a plug in. So uh, we'll go like that, get my level. Wherever that is. Oh, it's down in my bag. I think I can do it by eye. There's a little bit of adjustment on these anyway. So you don't need to tighten them too much. And that is now really solid. So then I'll loop these cables over like that. 
and then go into the wiring centre from the, the side here where the cable entries are and then I'll probably take the other one, put the other one below here and then take that one in the, the bottom. So I've mounted these two up now. That's for the upstairs and the hot water, that's for the downstairs. Both of them I've used separate cables for the low voltage and the mains voltage, just to keep those two band voltages separate. And then they're gonna come in here. Now what we've gotta do is go to the thermostats, the room thermostats where they are at the moment, and just figure out the wires that they've used. So this is the old room thermostat that was on here. And this basically just acts as a switch, so you've got permanent live and switch live. So that will be connected to the permanent live back at the wiring center. And then that will be the switch live, which will send signal to the zone valve to open the zone valve for the upstairs zone. This one, um, th these two wires, in fact, are not in use. Uh, they've just put them in connector blocks in the back. But what we'll do is mount the Nest thermostat on here, and then we'll just use two of these wires to send the 12 volt signal to this to actually power up the Nest thermostat and we'll probably just lose these in a the wall like they've done already. So we'll use the brown and the black as those are the ones that they've already used previously and we'll just uh, leave these ones disconnected. So at this end, those browns that we saw at the thermostat are connected in here at permanent live and we need to disconnect that otherwise there'll be 230 volts at the thermostat and it'll blow it up as soon as you connect it. So we're gonna disconnect these here. Now just to show you, I have safely isolated this, but it's always important to make sure that you safely isolate everything before working on it. So that is the main power coming in. If I turn that on, uh, the circuit itself is probably um, turned off anyway. I think. Yeah. But you... Uh, should always safely isolate. So in order to figure out which one of these three wires is the one that goes to that thermostat, we can trace from the upstairs heating zone, we can figure out which of these flex cables is the upstairs heating zone, follow it through here. It's this one, which is this one. So that's this black wire here. So we'll disconnect that. And then we've got to just find the cable that this black wire goes into, which it looks like it's this one. Yeah, so that is the cable for the upstairs thermostat. And we can actually disconnect the, the greys as well so that there's no neutral going to that point. Just, that can just avoid any sort of neutral earth faults. Now to double check that this is actually the cable for the upstairs thermostat, what I usually do is link out a couple of these wires. So if I just link these two, just twist them together, then do a continuity test at the other end using this. If there is continuity, it will beep, and if there isn't, then it won't beep. So that's how we can be doubly sure. So here we just test that. And we've got we've got continuity, so that's that means that that's the correct cable. So that's good. So that then means that these two wires are going to connect onto our two core to give our 12 volts to our thermostat over there. So we're just going to strip these both to the right length and then bring them into the wiring centre. Probably strip those back about there. So we're back in the cupboard of love and here I'm ready to connect. So what I've done just to show you, I've clipped these cables neatly with these sticky pads and cable ties, it's just a really nice, easy way to keep everything neat. 
So that's good. These are mounted on now. That's for the downstairs and this is for the upstairs and hot water. So I'm just terminating this one first. And if you follow the cables around, so we've got this flex here for the upstairs thermostat. And what I've done is connected that on now to the brown and the black wires in that room thermostat that I showed you earlier. So that will give us the 12 volt supply from this 12 volt terminal through to the thermostat which will be mounted on the wall. So that's, that's that black cable done. Now we're doing the white uh, five core flex. And what we've got here is brown is permanent live, blue is neutral. And then we've got the black is the switch live for the heating and the gray is the switch live for the hot water and then the green yellow will just go in the earth terminal. So what I've got to do now is just connect these ones into the correct terminals on the wiring center. Um, as these are switch live conductors, we should sleeve these with brown sleeving just so that people know that they are live conductors. So we'll put that bit of sleeving on there. And for, we'll start with the hot water. So this, is the current um, this one here this gray wire is a current oh thank you my feral crimper set has arrived my beautiful assistant just dropped it off to me um, so at the moment this gray one comes from the old programmer we're gonna get we're gonna disconnect that if I can find the correct screwdriver in my cramped cupboard here we go right so we're going to disconnect the gray which comes from the old programmer downstairs which is basically gone like that and what i do with these old ones usually is i just snip them off so that there's no copper exposed there just tuck that in there so that if it ever needs to be re um, reconnected in future it can be and then this grey one is going to go in there. So this is basically going to cool for hot water from the Nest thermostat. And then it's going to power up to the thermostat, the, uh, the tank thermostat, through the tank thermostat. If the tank's calling for heat, then it will open the valve up. That's it. So we just literally disconnect that old wire and put the new wire in. It's fairly simple, really. Simple when you know how, but it can be a little bit confusing if you don't and you can get in a bit of a muddle because it sort of hurts your brain when you start looking at all these wires too much and wondering what they all do close that up before i drop them everywhere and then we're gonna pop that one in there so i always like to give a little tug on the wires just to make sure they don't pull out because sometimes you don't get them quite connected properly so that's a hot water. Now we'll do our call for heat, which is going to go into this one here, number 12. So again, we'll put a little ferrule on it. In fact, I'll just put ferrules on all of them now. Saves time. Do them all in one go. So this is our call to heat for our upstairs thermostat, which is going to go in here. So we'll stick that in there like that and then tighten that connection up. And then it's just live, neutral and CPC. This is the trouble when you've got so many wires in here, it does it gets to be a bit of a spaghetti junction. Um, so live here. Now uh, we're missing we're missing a permanent live from somewhere. So this one, this black one here is important because that I think powers up the boiler. So we need to I'm gonna check that downstairs at that uh, old control unit but I've got a feeling that that actually powers up the boiler which means that we need to make sure that that stays 
connected and this one is probably the neutral for the boiler as well so we want to check that and just make sure that that is correct some boilers they're always powered on and then other boilers they only power on when the actual system comes on um, all right permanent life neutral on earth i'm going to connect those all in at the end so i'm going to do this one next which is the heat the call for heat for the downstairs heating so I'll ferrule these up as well and then so this is our switch live for the downstairs heating so we're going to connect that to this here so we're going to remove the black wire which goes to the wall mounted thermostat and that one is going to connect to our 12 volt supply to power up the thermostat so we need to keep that up there out of the way and then this is going to go in the call for heat terminal for that downstairs zone like so so that's that now we've got our permanent lives and neutrals that we need to connect in and we've got our low voltage for our downstairs so I'm going to connect the low voltage for the downstairs thermostat and then we'll find the brown wire in that particular cable as well and do the same with that sometimes you've just got to look through and find the buried Cable. There we go. That's our brown. So that will go in this connector. So that's the 12 volt supply done. And then we need the two browns and two blues to go in to our permanent life and neutral terminals down here. This is when I think. The Wago connector versions of these are actually way better because you can fit. So we figured out what's going on here now. This is where the old programmer was. The whole system is actually powered off this, not from the fuse, switch fuse connection unit upstairs. So what we've got to do is this is going to still need to stay in place. And what we're going to do is connect the permanent live here through in this connector block. In fact, I might just get some, might be nicer to get some Wago connectors on there. Um, but basically, just connect these together. And then that will, that then sends permanent live up to the, um, I'm getting brain fog now, uh, the wiring centre, that's it. <laughs> permanent live up to the wiring centre. And this is the switch live coming back so that when any of the valves are open, it sends power switch live to the boiler to kick in the pump in the boiler. Um, and then this one is the neutral for the boiler, which will connect on there. So the boiler has permanent live, switch live, neutral, um, which is important to make sure that they're still connected. Then these old wires, that's the old call for heat, which we've got rid of upstairs. Uh, that, that's uh, hot water. That's the old call for heating, I think. And then this was, uh, probably the neutral to go up to the wiring center so we need to actually reinstate that as well so that's quite important that we re reinstate that too yeah permanent live um, oh nice I like it Corey always has great ideas so what we're gonna do even though they're probably gonna be ripping all this out <laughs> um, Well, we'll just do it like this and then it will just confuse the, the electricians who come in, which it's always good fun to do that anyway. We like confusing people. So, and that is that, that is that. So at this point when people go, yeah, I'm definitely not gonna do my own Nest thermostat installation, it's far too complicated. So now that my legs have 
got their feeling back. I'm ready to sit in this cupboard again for a few more minutes. And now that we know what's going on downstairs, we can do the final connections here. So we just need to do our permanent live there. Um, that one needs to stay because that's the switch live for the boiler. And then these two need to go in the correct terminals as well. That's going to be the neutral for the boiler. And that, or well, actually, that's the main neutral feed that comes up. And this is the main live feed that comes up from that switch fuse connection unit downstairs. So. We'll just tidy these up a bit because they're a little bit crinkled. Straighten these wires up and then we'll pop these in the correct terminals. So the permanent live will go in here. It's always a bit tight to fit these in, but there you go. That's that. And then the neutral, we'll put a bit of blue sleeving on if we've got some. There we go, blue sleeving on the gray. And then we're gonna pop that in there. Okay. Now. Make sure that I've just connected the right grey wire because this one, that, that's there. Yeah, that's for the thermostat downstairs. So that one can cut off. And that is it, basically. We've got all our correct wires connected now. So all we need to do is just tidy this up a little bit as much as possible so that the lid will fit on properly there's not really a great way to do this to be honest because it's just always going to be a bit of a tangle but you can kind of just push them the wires in a bit so that they stay like that uh, cord grip needs to go back on for this cable, so we'll tighten that up. We'll screw those on there. Alright, so we are getting there now. Cover on. on that one. I'm not going to finally close those until we know that everything's working properly but that is pretty much ready to turn on now at least. don't know why that screws loose. Tighten that up. I know why it says high voltage. Shouldn't be any high voltage. Well I mean shouldn't be any more than 230 volts in here. So at this end my beautiful assistant Corey has already prepared it for us. These are very easy to mount, so there's not really much point to show you how this works. It's just two screws, and then you take the cable through the middle and you connect it into the two wires that you've connected to the 12 volt terminal in the Nest Heat Link. Now I've powered it up at the switch fuse connection unit, so the whole system is powered up, but we wanna make sure that this has got 12 volts and not more than that before we connect it up. So we can see there, we've just got 12 volts. So that's fine. That just confirms that you've connected up right because if you connected it to 230 volts and then you put this on, it will just blow it up and, and you've wrecked your whole, your whole thing. So then all we do, uh, that's fine. Internet connection we can't do yet. Location, um, we are in Europe. Well, we, we used to be. I'm not sure where we are anymore. Com completely now. lost. Here we go. The ook. Okay, so I'll put the postcode in. Uh, right, combi. Uh, it's a system boiler, isn't it? I think. Oh, district heat heating. Uh, I can never remember. It's not a combi boiler. It is a system boiler. So we need system boiler control on off source gas delivery radiators. So that's important just to know. 
Um, if you've got oil, for example, you can change it to oil or electric or propane, pellets, geothermal, whatever you've got. In this case, we're gas and it's radiators or you've got the option of underfloor heating, in-floor radiant, but this is radiators. That just um, adjusts the way that it, it measures the um, thermal dynamics of the house because obviously an in-floor radiant takes longer to actually heat up. Uh, it doesn't peak as quickly um, than, uh, than radiators do, so it takes that into consideration. And then hot water for this one, we've got uh, the hot water is controlled from this one, so we'll put on and off, continue. And the temperature is just like setting the eco temperature. So you can set that to like the minimum temperature it will go down to is nine and a half degrees. The Nest app we will skip. Okay, so this little yellow thing, it's important to note, uh, when that's on, you'll get a problem where the heating stays on all the time. It's because that is to do with removing bacteria for like um, Legionella. Legionella, yeah. So you have to change one of the settings in here. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. Let me have a look. Uh, equipment, yeah, and then bacteria prevention and you want to disable bacteria prevention then if we go back to the main screen now it's fine so otherwise it will run for ages for some reason so at the moment it's off all we do now is rotate to above the current room temperature so that's the current room temperature and then this is the temperature that we want and it tells us how long it'll take to get to that temperature Corey's going to go and check now to see if the, the upstairs heating's actually kicked in or not. In fact, let's go over there and we can see for ourselves. Can you hear it? You can feel hot water both sides of the pipe, so it must be working. Yeah, if I just turn it off, you should hear the valve close. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Good. Should we try downstairs? Yep, we'll go and put this one on downstairs. So we're gonna connect this one on now for downstairs. Clicks in, peel this off. Usually takes a minute or two to um, get going. Okay, so basically the test that we're doing, very rudimentary, I've got my hand on the two port valve and I'm, gonna, I'm going to shout to Jordan and ask that he, he turns up the heating to call for heat. Um, and then turns it back down again um, to say that the heating satisfied, basically. So I just want to feel the valve operate and open up. Okay, George, do you want to go for that? So you should be able to hear it okay. and feel it and feel the pipe underneath get hot. So that's fine. I mean, the best way really is to just see if the radiators warm up. So at the moment, the radiators should all be cold. So that is cold at the moment. So I'm going to turn that on. And uh, you can do it manually here, so I'll just show you that. If you press this button, that's a manual override. So if the thermostat in the room is broken or something, you can always override it here, which is quite good to know. So we can hear the valve opening. And then after a few minutes, we should find that Yes, yeah, so that's nice and hot now. Radios is getting uh, nice and warm, so upstairs zone is working. We'll just do the same check for downstairs. We'll go downstairs. We'll turn one of the radiators on and see. This one is nice and hot as well, so that's all good. So we're ready to go. Just put the covers back on and then we'll get out of here. So that's it. We have two Nest smart learning thermostats all up and running, ready to go, and we can make our customers' house nice and cosy. And the great thing about these is you can control them for your f from your phone. So wherever you are in the world, if you're you know, coming back early from work, for example, and you want to get the house warm for when you get home, you just do it on your phone. If you're going on holiday and you want to shut the heating down while you're away and set it to come on again a day before you come home, you can do that. It's just so flexible. I've got one of these in my own house and I find it really great. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video where you can get all the Nest products. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, share it out with someone else who's benefited, who might benefit from it, and hit a like if you don't mind, it really helps the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and have a great day.